Hi friends, how you guys doing today? I hope all is well. I hope you guys are doing good. On this motivational Monday, I am doing awesome. I'm hungry. Um, I got something light to eat. It's around lunchtime today. Um, I went by KFC. One of my favorite things on that item besides their size is the Famous Bowl. So I stopped by and I grabbed me a Famous Bowl. I already got it set up over here. Matter of fact, hold on, let me grab me some napkins. Cause that's one thing they did not give me through the drive through was some napkins, but I keep some on hand. But uh, yeah, so I went and got me the Famous Bowl extra mashed potatoes on it. Um, light on the chicken. And um, if you don't know about the Famous Bowl, it comes with mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, cheese, and like chicken chunks. I think it's their tender chunk, their tenders that they cut up, but it is so good. Cause I like shepherd's pie, so it reminds me of like a shepherd's pie, but just with like chicken. It's right hot too, cause it's lunchtime. Mm, 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 mm. So I hope everybody year is starting off really good with four days into the year. Uh, classes started back up for um, some of the students today. So look at that cheese. Mm. Look at that. Ooh. All right, um, all the little fast food restaurant places, KLC, do got the best mashed potatoes. Mm, that's chicken. Mm. I love it. This is one of my favorite things. And they also got um chicken pie pie. Their chicken pie pie is really good. Mm. I don't too much care for they like chicken on the bone. I like their tenders. They popcorn chicken. Mmm. Ooh, hot. And I like their grilled chicken, but only certain locations carry it. The location that I'm at, they don't, they used to serve the grilled chicken, but they don't have it anymore. Mm. This is so perfect. And it's kind of cool out and it's warming me up a little bit. Mm. Really good. I didn't eat nothing all day because I wanted to be really, really enjoy this. Mm. end up getting them. I Dr. Pepper and wanted a sweet tea. I tasted that. I said, uh, sugar well. Because it sure wasn't in that. Ugh. Sometimes I hate when they like change up staff and stuff because they they used to have some good sweet tea this location right here because when i used to come here a lot 
and get when they had grilled chicken before they took it off the menu i would come get my little five dollar fill up box grilled chicken their potato wedges before they change it to fries and the sweet tea i'm talking about before i go back to work they used to be like my little lunch at least two times a week sometimes And they done switched up management and staff, like, came in, I guess, and clean house. I said, <laughs> when I got to the window, I said, let me taste that before I pull off. And I, I said, my face, he said, what? I said, this is not sweet. He said, what is this? I said, like, unsweet tea. That's just what I told him. He was like, what, what would you like? I was like... Give me a root beer. He was like, no root beer. I got it out of the bill. I said, I guess I'll settle for that. This bowl making up for it, though. So I ain't gonna complain, but I sure wanted me some sweet tea. I may have to make my own good old batch of southern sweet tea because it ain't no place around here that making it to my liking. Go to Popeye's, it's too sweet. Like, sugar diabetes sweet. Go to McDonald's, it's either that, it's either too sweet or not sweet enough. It's, it's hot and I'm digging from one side and it's like bringing it from the bottom but it is so good and I added some pepper on here because I like mine kind of peppery Mouth. Yeah, I'm right here in KLC Park uh, parking lot back then watching the people look the lunch rush come in and get whatever they gonna get. And look, it's a big old work truck. He said he finna get him some KLC crazy thing about it is they got the inside shut down so everything is through the drive through my thing is what if you was walking that you have to walk up to the window huh? a lot of these places can't open up and the inside they just don't want to because either one well, both probably both reasons. They don't want to. They probably don't cut back staff, and they don't want to be responsible for cleaning up after people. You know, like so they could open up the inside and do you know, um, have it to a certain capacity for people to come in and out. A lot of people using this pandemic today. It's a better them. The less people we got just working the kitchen, we don't need nobody in here to keep the dining clean and stuff. I mean, I guess. Mm. But yeah, this uh, reminds me of shepherd's pie. My baby, he, well, both of them, they love my shepherd's pie. Um, I do mine, like, with the ground beef, and I make a gravy to it. And I do corn for them. And one of them like cheese, one of them don't. So I do half cheese, half just plain. Mm.
I might make them one this week, a homemade one. But yeah, like I was saying, we four days into the year. I hope everybody who had, you know, started off with your resolutions and y'all keeping them going. Yeah, I hope people who got goals, they're starting them. You know, making this year off to be a great year. I had, um, coming into the year, I had some bad news. You know, a passing of someone that was like a brother. Um, don't know all the details but you know it's always sad when you lose somebody you know regardless of the circumstances always sad That's a truck y'all backing up through the line. I guess he said he's gonna give me some KFC today. <laughs> he really backing this truck up in the line. What you figure it out? I think this was a chicken tender because I've been having to like cut it with them. Like they like half cut it. Yeah, the kids went back to school, whether it was in person or online today. I got my babies up. He looked at me and said, um, how many more months into summer vacation? I looked at him and I said, I be telling him, I be like, you got a long ways to go. Why I tell you the boy don't like going to school? He just don't. And I don't know why, because I remember I didn't, I like going to school. For the most part. But a lot of these kids don't like going to school. School is different. School ain't how it used to be when we went. School was really fun. And I could say from work, because you know I work in the schools that they done took all the fun out of school. School nowadays ain't nothing but these kids ain't nothing but a number on the spreadsheet. How much money a school could get from them. What type of government program is going to fund these schools for a certain type of... Uh, to have certain type of children come to their school. Whether it's the race of them, the origin of them, where they come from. You know, that's mostly what all these schools is. Now, kids are nothing but a number. It ain't really a lot of compassionate teachers. It's some, but it ain't a lot. It's a lot of teachers that work who don't even have kids, so they can't relate to a problem to a child that has problems um, or learning issues or whatever the case may be. And like I say, this is things that I see from working in there and as being a parent. 
so I see it from both sides. Um, being a teacher is tough. I mean, you really have to put up with a lot. And, and you have to also, because you don't know who's telling the truth, who's lying about their circumstances. Um, kids are cruel. Kids have always been cruel. Have they got crueler over the years? Maybe so. Um, but my baby just don't, they, they really rather just learn from home. If I, you know, just let them, they don't really like the atmosphere of school. And I did, but I mean, like I said, it's a new, it's a new age. Like you in sixth grade doing eighth grade work. And if you ain't figured out the eighth grade work in sixth grade, you left behind. Like back then, teachers took their time, made sure that the child learned their craft before they moved on. Now, that's not the case. This week, we're going over fractions. I'm starting fractions Monday. You're taking a test Friday. If you haven't mastered fractions within this time period, oh, well, I'm going on to now dividing fractions or multiplying by, like it's, they don't make sure or care if the child has learned the craft. And that's how your kids get left behind. And it's sad because me standing back from a working mom's perspective, let's just say I'm out here hustling and busting on work and making sure my kids got. And I'm taking care of them. I do the bare minimum, like maybe make them read, make sure their homework done. But I'm not really making sure they understand the craft if they ha if they don't bring it to my attention. So now, because I'm not on top of my child and their craft or what they're learning in school, I go to a parent-teacher meeting. He's spelling because I had no idea, you know. And it and it sucks because the parent-teacher communication is so off. I mean, I'm telling you this from a parent standpoint. Like, I literally email my kids' teacher and write in their planner. Like, they can never say they don't hear from me once a week. I want to update on my child once a week. I don't care. I don't care if you say, if you don't want to write me to Thursday and say, well, Monday this happened, Tuesday this happened, Wednesday this happened, and today this, that's fine. Or if you want to check in on a Wednesday and say, well, so far, such and such is doing good. Yeah, we, we had a test and he didn't do so well, but I gave him extra, whatever the case may be, I'll be wanting to know what's going on with mine. And I'm not oblivious to what goes on in the school system because I know what you know so like i know what it is for for what it is like when it's time to pick my kids classes and stuff like i literally be like no <laughs> they're not doing this they're not going there they're not doing this this is what i want them to be matter of fact this is the teacher i want them to have don't give me these 26 27 year old kid teachers who ain't had no kids straight out of no give me a seasoned teacher who has some experience who has a little compassion give me one of them who maybe is a grandma or maybe still even a mother give me one of those type of teachers don't give me somebody who still just took the exam and passed and now she's ready to teach i don't want her i'm sorry i'm pretty sure she'll be great after she get a little season on her, like that skillet. You know, you know how you get that that uh the skillet that you got the season, it get better with time. I'm pretty sure better with time, she'll be great if that's her true compassion that's in her, in their heart. But right now I don't need one of them to work with mine. I need somebody that already them been seasoned, greased, and ready for me to just throw the chicken in the them the type of teachers that I request. 
for my kids because like i said i i know i know i know when it comes to my kids like my kids are kind of like on a spectrum so that's that's one that's one dollar sign they're boys that's another dollar sign they're african-american that's another dollar sign so i already know how they view my babies so i have to be the bigger advocate for them by going there and say mm, that's not what we're gonna do but we will do it like this um no we won't be little him like this we will do this and if you don't know your child to take our time and know these teachers and do pop-ins and schedule visits like before all of this change i used to pop up to my baby school pop up pop, i want to see what's going on in the classroom i used to do it all the time now things have changed i can't do it like i used to but i but i have several i want to say at least each quarter i have a parent teacher conference because I refuse for somebody to tell me about my child. I, cause I, I try my best to work with my own kids, even when I'm tired. And I know what they're capable of. I know what they struggle in. I give an example. I'm gonna let y'all go. I gotta make a couple, one more run before I, before I actually go and get them out of school. I remember. When I was a young mother, I had my babies at 18. Twins. So, when all of this autism and stuff was coming about, I really didn't know nothing about it. I had to really read and understand and grasp what was going on with one of the twins. Um... You know, it's a lot of different levels when you say a child is autism because you have high-functioning kids that's autistic. You have low-functioning kids. You have some of them that's in the middle. You have some that's plateaued. Like, it's a, it's different things, and they do different things, and they act certain ways. Like, it could be, you could be with me, and I could be perfectly fine, but you start to notice every time, every time we sit down at a conference meeting, I'm tapping my pencil. You know, or something. It, it's something weird that they do that's off. And with my baby, looks perfectly fine, but he ticks. And usually they say ticks are when the mind goes idle. You always supposed to keep the mind occupied, stimulated, because when the mind is not stimulated with a child that's high functioning, and I think it happened, it could occur with kids that are low functioning, but their their ticks are more severe, like banging, hitting, aggression. Um, it's just, you have to do your own type of research, but I know with my son, his comes because lack of stimulation to the brain. So like, he like puzzles, building Legos, like that's his thing. Like that's what keeps him stimulated. But when he's not stimulated, he ticks, he runs in my house. <sighs> he runs in my house. Gotta love him for it. And then it's crazy cause I'm like, go outside and run he'll never want to go outside and run but it's because it's like it's kind of like a person who um it's like a trained behavior so if i tell him to go outside he don't have his pattern outside it's a different type of vision so he has already in his mind because like what he does, he hits my front door, bum. Then he runs to another door, bum. But he has to hit the door because the, the sound of hitting the door is the tick. So when he hears he hit himself, hit the door, boom, that's one tick. And it's like a rhythm, like your brain. So it's like a rhythm. So if he don't hit, like if he don't hear him hit one of the doors or it's not loud enough or whatever, it's not right, he'll stop. And then he'll do it again. So, anyways, but like I said, I had to learn these things because I used to get frustrated. I didn't really understand. And I'm still learning. I'm still learning because about the differences. Like, like somebody brought up. I remember when I was doing a check list and it was a, a student who had autism. And I'm just like, he got autism, really? 
because it's such a wide spectrum it really is but um yeah so like i was saying as far as like the teachers and stuff then on my uh, come from my part so when i was learning of my son and things like that and i used to and they put, wanted to put my son on a special like learning plan um and they put him on a learning plan now mind you i work with my kids i read with them i write with them i know where they're at i know their weaknesses and like most kids reading is a struggle i mean it was a struggle for me it, I mean, it's a struggle for a lot of people. The reading, either you can read or you can't comprehend, or you can comprehend and you struggle reading. Like, one thing about my kids, their comprehension is good because if you read to them, they understand what, what has been read to them. Now, when they read, it's hard for them to comprehend because they're too busy trying to figure out what they're reading. So, that's my baby's case for both of them. But, long story short, we're going to a meeting. Mind you, I'm the only in the building amongst other people so you know i'm already like a single black mom in here now all of these peoples finna try to tell me about my black little boy so i used to be frustrated i was young i was still figuring it out so i used to be very frustrated but i used to always be on top of my stuff so i remember i think he was going into first grade first or second grade and um i was i i search their plan like i don't let them i hear their suggestions and i pick and choose what i think is best for them according to the plan um i just don't let them just do anything because that's more money for them it, they're not really concerned about the child they're just thinking about oh what can we do what kind of program how many minutes how many days we can do to fund this i already know that's what they're thinking so <clears throat> I remember when the and the lady say, Yes, he's doing excellent in reading. I think we should um take him out of this program and put him into this program and give him more of these type of minutes and do this and do this. And so I'm listening to her. Let me put the glasses down. I'm listening to her. And I'm like, he's reading good? I was like, what is he reading? I was like, can we call him out of class so he can read it to me? I was like, because if he's reading here like that, I said, I'm I'm appalled because when he's reading with me at night, he's struggling. I said, so can somebody please call him up so I can hear him? And the lady was like, no, but you know, we we and we enforce him and we give him. And I'm like, listen, what you're not gonna sit here and do is tell me something that I know I do know that my child cannot do. You're not gonna move him along to further fail him you're not gonna do that see that's not what you're gonna do with mine you could do it with somebody else's but not with mine and so i used to get so mad and like still to this day when they say no child left behind that's kind of bs because the children is left behind and like i said i'm i'm I work at a school and it, and it's crazy because like, I've been talking to my coworker. I said, yeah, they be talking about no child left behind, but they leave them behind. You really do leave these children behind because you don't make sure they have the crap or you're trying to elevate them and they're not ready. Like my, my babies are very immature and they're going to be slapped or forced to grow up. Like at 12, it was okay to still be immature. Nowadays, you no, know, you kind of got to be on your shit or you left behind and it's sad because kids are forcing being forced to grow up so fast i mean everywhere home life academic life and if you got a mom who or a parent or parents who are not truly involved they just do the minimum because they're trying to provide it ain't nothing wrong with that they kind of get lost in what the child was really going on with the child you know and i mean i get it you have to work to survive but i kind of got on that subject because <laughs> My baby, he made me laugh this morning. I couldn't do nothing but let him say, Mom, 
how many more months to summer vacation? I was like, well, you ain't even got the spring vacation yet. He's like, oh, when is that? I was like, in March. <laughs> and you have no days off. They don't have no days off. They, they have one day off here in January. It's a Monday for MLK Day. And they have no days off until spring break. So, I'm going to see how he, how he handled that. Y'all, I ate half of my bowl. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to warm it up. Well, I am going to warm it up later. Because it's right good. But, but working parents try to make sure that you ask your children is there any subject that they're struggling in is there anything they need help maybe you yourself can't help them maybe you got to find a family member or maybe get a tutor or maybe see if the school offer programs but don't let the system be a reason why your child feels like giving up um you know i know we all push our children to go to school go to school go to college and stuff and then later on in life, we tell them, oh, you know, like with me, I want my ch child to be the best they could be. If they want to go to Harvard, oh, my God. If they want to go to Yale, oh, my God. If they say, Mama, no, I just really want to go up here and learn me a trade. I'm still going to be proud of my babies. As long as they ain't thinking they finna be getting handouts and being bums long as they're productive citizens in this world that's all i wish for for my babies i'm not going to my because sometimes when we expect things we get disappointed i want to know their goals their dreams their vision and help better them to be that because you know um i'm gonna let y'all go but i went to church and the one of the things that the pastor had said he said maybe if some parents would have sat down and talked with their children more about their futures their goals and where they want to be people from the outside with negativity wouldn't be able to tear them down so bad because their parents already believed in them and their goal and their vision and you know that stuck to me because i ask my kids what they want to be i be telling them they're gonna be architects all the time because they could draw and they could build and I'd be like, y'all go make some good money. So I tell them that, but now that they get older, I really do need to reiterate, what is your dream? Because they really don't care for sports. I put them in sports so they can play sports because they need to be active. But in case, you know, in a couple of years, they say, oh, mom, I want to be like LeBron. Right now, my babies ain't worried about being like LeBron. But do they like to draw and color and build? Yes, they do. So I take that talent and I try to you know, force it in them, get them positive reinforcement. Instead of so when the outside world say they can't do it or they, they'll fail, they'll do this, they know that mama know. My mama said, I'm going to be the best architect. Or no, I know I could draw, so I'm going to be drawing the cartoon characters when you see on TV, you know, or I'm going to be in that comic book, or I'm going to be drawing characters for this person. So I try to encourage them and the talents that I already see for them <sighs> whatever the case may be so you know I want to encourage my kids to do what they want to do as long as it ain't hurting nobody and it's, and it's making them productive in life you know and if they got that little inch in their soul to go for it 
don't let it expire if you know something just tearing at you that you need to do it or you could do it you could do it because it's not just doing it for a reason it's a reason why and even when you're scared you still got to jump out there and have faith that is my biggest thing this year is having faith stepping on faith and believing that what's for my good to be for be for the best of me you know so anyways you guys leave y'all thoughts down below about the school systems how do your kids feel about going to school do they love it do they hate it is it blah because my parents are making me going what are some of their favorite subjects how do you as a parent if you're a working parent or if you're in the school system yourself how do you feel about it y'all let me know down in the comments below i hope you guys like this video don't forget to subscribe like comment and share until next time y'all be blessed y'all be easy peace